FC Barcelona is one of the greatest teams, if not the greatest team of all time. Real Madrid is the best. Just shut up. I'm going to explain the entire history of FC Barcelona in about 10 minutes. So let the lesson begin. This area right here is called Catalonia and what we need is its capital, Barcelona. The city was founded by Romans, why? Because they basically wanted the entire world. The Romans set up a colony called Barcino at the end of the 1st century BC and then for over 200 years Barcelona was under Muslim rule. But following the Christian reconquest it became a country of the Carolingian Empire and the medieval period really helped this city evolve, which made it the economic and political center of the western Mediterranean. But we are talking about the club, no? Yes, just be patient. The 17th and 18th centuries were a very bad period for Barcelona. They struggled to keep their political and economic independence. Oh, they have a savior? Who? The textile industry. Because of it, a period of cultural recovery in the mid 19th century began. Well, enough history about the city, let's talk about the club. In 1889, the football pioneer Juan Gamper decided that he wanted to form a new club. And after 11 other enthusiasts responded to his newspaper advert, the dream became a reality and FC Barcelona was born. So the new club started its journey successfully. After they lost to Biscaya in the final of Copa del Rey in 1902, Barcelona bounced back and won the competition eight times between then and 1928. But the club's golden era took place in the 1920s. Barca dominated the Campeonat de Catalunya and Copa del Rey, with their first big goal scorer being Paulinho Alcantara. In 1929, Barcelona won La Liga and after that it went all downhill. There were ongoing conflicts in the country, which eventually led to the Spanish Civil War and the beginning of Franco's regime. Gamper's time in Barcelona ended abruptly after he was deported from Spain because of political reasons. A few years later, he committed suicide. Josep Suñol had become the new director of FC Barcelona. He was a left-wing politician and this would finally lead to his death. He was executed by the Francoist regime in 1938. The situation was actually pretty bad under his regime, so much so that Barcelona had to change their name to a less Catalanian sounding Barcelona Club de Football. Also the Catalan colors were removed from their crest. The next two decades were reasonably successful for the club and in the period from 1942 to 1957 Barcelona claimed 5 La Liga titles and 5 Copa del Rey trophies. And here comes the worst decade for Barcelona, the 60s. Di Stefano was in his prime at that time and Real Madrid was just too strong for Barcelona. And in 10 years, Barca have only won two Copa del Reyes. But all of that was going to change because of one very special player. The player who changed Barcelona forever joined the club. I'm of course talking about Johan Cruyff. If you want to know more about his career, then check out this video I made. Now, Johan Cruyff was so good that he was one of the main reasons Barcelona won a La Liga title in 1974. It was the first one in 10 years. But that was it. Barca didn't win a league title for the next 10 years. With this in mind, this era was still not composed of only sadness. The trophy collection would still grow rapidly, since Barca was better in cup competitions. So in this period they have won 4 Copa del Reyes and 2 Cup Winners Cups. But Johan Cruyff's influence for Barcelona doesn't stop here, not at all. In 1979, Cruyff came up with the idea of founding a football academy that would work like the Ajax one, and his proposal was accepted. So an old building called La Masia was converted into the academy headquarters, and his idea was just incredible, as the academy was one of the best in the world, and I can easily prove it. Here are only a few players 
players that have passed through La Masia. Carles Puyol, Gerard Piquet, Cesc Fabregas, Pep Guardiola, Lionel Messi, I could go on all day. That's how great La Masia actually is. The year 1988 is really important for Barcelona's history, as Johan Cruyff returned to the club, but this time as a manager. He made a dream team. He had players like Pep Guardiola, Michael Laudrup, Romario and Christoph Stoikov. But what's more important is the philosophy Johan brought to the club, the so-called tiki-taka system. I think you all know what this is about. This is the style based on retaining and circulating possession of the ball. And I have to say, for me, this is the most beautiful way of playing football. And the results were coming as well. Under Cruyff, Barcelona won four consecutive La Liga titles, two Copa del Rey trophies, one World Cup Winners' Cup and their first European trophy. But silverware was not enough for Johan, as he opened the club's door for other Dutch players. And that's when Barcelona's Dutch connection appeared. And it peaked in the 90s and early 2000s, with Ronald Koeman, Patrick Kluivert and Giovanni van Bronckhorst leaving a big mark at the club. But the Dutch connection didn't end with players. Just after Cruyff's departure from the club in 1996, Luis van Gaal took over as manager and he continued the streak of good results. He won two La Liga titles, two Copa del Rey trophies and one Cup Winners' Cup. In the 2000s, a new era began for Barca. They have lost Luis Figo, their best player and the hero for the fans, to their biggest rivals, Real Madrid. The early 2000s, so many changes, but not exactly for the better, until a new Dutchman arrived in 2005, Frank Rijkaard. Much like the others before him, he formed the team with expensive signings like Ronaldinho and players from La Masia, Carles Puyol, Xavi, Messi and Andres Iniesta. With Rijkaard, Barcelona won two La Liga titles and one Champions League. But then, the most dominant period for a football club in the history of the game arrived. In 2008, Pep Guardiola took over as the club's manager, previously being the Barca B manager. He was not only a coach, he was someone who understood the philosophy of Barcelona. He was a player at this club and he was the leader who was going to make this team unbeaten. Guardiola's methods were focused on tiki-taka and dominance of possession. Soon enough, this this playing style became so iconic that it was the absolute highest standard for any football club. And if you watched football during that period, you surely know that there was no team in the world that could have beaten prime Barca. The level of play was just too high, it was not normal. And don't get me started on Lionel Messi, this guy was an alien. In the 2011 UCL final, he got a 10 out of 10 rating, and that was against Manchester United, prime Manchester United. And if I still didn't convince you, then I will let the trophies speak for themselves. From 2008 to 2012, Barcelona won three La Ligas, two Copa del Reyes and two Champions Leagues. This successful period continued until 2015, when Luis Enrique came in as a manager and led the club to another treble with Messi, Suarez and Neymar, also known as the MSN, being in top form. And since that Champions League final win in 2015, this team was just never the same in the competition. Now, the reason is actually tied to the new president, Bartomeu. He destroyed this club in every way possible. And to prove that, I will just say that he is the one that brought Coutinho, Dembele and Antoine Griezmann to the club. He is the one that made the three worst transfers in football history possible. Now, he is not the president anymore, but the damage he left behind is irrecoverable. In 2020, because of the pandemic and other bad financial decisions, the club was in debt with over 1 billion euros. And until this very day, Barcelona have not repaid it. Should I also add that 2020 was when Barca lost 8-2 to Bayern Munich, finished the season trophyless and Messi turned against the club? I think not.
But in 2021, a glimpse of hope appeared when Juan Laporta was elected as the new president of FC Barcelona. And since then, the club has been on the right path. But that doesn't mean that there are no problems. Barcelona still have problems registering players in La Liga. They have demolished the Camp Nou and have to renovate it while still being in debt. And the only way Barca can get out of this situation is to perform in the Champions League and La Liga. So, what do you think? Will Barcelona ever get back to being the best club in the world or will it go down as the club that lost it all?